Hey guys and welcome to the second workshop but the first affliction one. Today we're focusing on a sharp pride kill on heroic mode. The footage is provided by a 568 warlock clearing 10 heroic bosses. There's a lot of tips and tricks throughout the footage on how to optimize your affliction play so stay tuned as we walk through it step by step. First off let's take a quick look at his UI to see if there's much to be improved here. His UI is rather clean and not too messy, it tells us the information we need. We could discuss the placement a bit. His weak hours with trinket procs and such are shown down in the left corner, a bit out of eyesight if you're looking directly in the middle of your character's feet. I always prefer to center them closer to your eyes so we can react faster to them. His shard bar is also very tiny and is shown on his frames. If it works for you it's fine, but you always need to be aware of how many shards you have left. He lacks a cast bar showing tick timers properly, maybe a bit bigger so it's easier to see. Also when you track your things with weak hours or tell me when, make sure you try to make the important ones bigger so we don't end up mixing jade spirit and smaller procs with the more important ones when they all proc at once. UI is very personal so as long as things work for you it's good but if you do find yourself being slow with reactions and especially lacking DPS on movement fights, focus your primary add-ons and the need to know things closer to your character and put those not so necessary informations further away from your eyesight. Sometimes you just get told too much info that you can't filter the good from the bad. Now since the UI isn't a huge mess, let's move on to the video itself. As I said in the destruction workshop, opener is everything, but for affliction it's even more than everything. Your DPS peaks at the opener and drops down continuously for the entire fight. Therefore, if we fuck up the opener's affliction, you might as well let your dog or cat play. I swear there's no way you can catch up with this spec if you remotely fuck up the opener. So with that being said, let's take a look at this guy's opener. If you check my opener video for Affliction, you would know that we aim towards using a pre-potion and a casting haunt. A little trick is to use soul burn 20 seconds before the timer starts of the pull, so we gain an extra shot. Because you regenerate a shot every 20 seconds out of combat, but soul burn lasts 30 seconds. Now it's not always possible to do this, so let's focus on what happens after. You get your pre-potion up and cast haunt. Soul burn and soul swap or just soul swap if you have soul burn active, so you apply all the dots. These dots are applied with no procs at all, and with how random expanded mine and wrath proc can be on the opener, I think delaying Dark Soul, Engineering Gloves and Berserking or what you may have is a better option 9 out of 10 times because of the delayed trinkets. But that being said, you want to do one Malefic Grasp tick before you renew dots again with Soul Burn Soul Swap. Now a little note here though, you do not wish to cast the full Malefic Grasp as he does. The internal cooldown trinket Expanded Mind only procs from the initial channel cast of Malefic Grasp not the ticks or the dot ticks so we have to cast spells to proc it. Those you can do one malefic grasp tick, rechannel it and then do one more tick before you apply dots. But we can't always wait for expanded mind to proc before we apply our first set of dots with procs and cooldowns. So use your cooldowns right after the malefic grasp tick or maximum two and follow it up with the soul burn and soul swap. Now we will have dots running with the procs we baited and cooldowns. Now the reason why we can't really delay the soul burn is because if you watch he cast one full malefic grasp with half a channel more. Not only will it reduce the chance of expanded mind proccing, but it can also get you in a situation where you apply the second set of dots too slow. You want to have them running with whatever proc instantly. Now there's already 5 seconds used on our things that proc and the remaining 5 seconds before the 10 second procs fades we know we will reapply dots again. It isn't worth to wait over 5 seconds for procs just so we can reapply them eventually when we reach the 10 stack black blood or before the 10 seconds fade. Those not making it worth to wait for every proc before reapplying. Now what I'm getting to is because if we delay the dots for so long, not only does it mean less time with dots ticking with no procs from the opener, it also means our corruption is ticking with no haste giving us a reduced chance to regenerate shards with nightfall. And why I'm saying this is because this guy gets trapped in exactly a scenario where he ended up with one shard left before the last soul burn soul swap and haunt is fading from this target. We really can't drop haunt on the target in the opener if we want to succeed. But unless you get the pre-combat soul burn extra shard, you have to get lucky with nightfall to give you that extra shard so you can apply haunt before the soul burn soul swap at 10 stacks. Because if we don't get a nightfall proc, we won't have two shards to reapply dots before 10 second procs fade and do the second haunt before we reapply them. In this case he casts haunt and ends up not having a shard for the 10 stack and 10 second cooldowns. 
If you get this scenario, you should always skip the haunt so you make sure to renew the dots instead. He ends up being without shard and his initial 5 stacks black blood with cooldowns was more powerful than the dot he is now manually reapplying. You cannot end up in a situation like this. He should have at least manually redotted while the trinket was building up to 10 stacks. Renewing them with lesser powerful procs is a huge waste. Imagine if he didn't get a second metagen proc, it would have been even more horrible. So not only did he mismanage the opener, his damage control of the opener was a huge DPS loss. I personally just give up if the opener fucks up, because there's no hope and the damage control you can do is very limited as affliction. But in this scenario he could have gotten some dots running with 8 or 10 stacks, by manually reapplying the dots knowing he lacked shards. So enough rant about the opener. Next up on a boss like Sharp Pride, we know small adds will spawn. Some may say lol whoring, but we actually want to swap to them so we extend our opener dots. Any target that appears early on and we can swap our opener dots onto is a big plus. So not only do we gain a lot of damage, we also get to extend our dots duration so they last longer every time we swap. Now since we have boss add-ons that show us exact timers, we should always be prepared in this situation and react fast. If you notice he has a timer counting down for him, but it takes him 4 seconds before the dots are onto the first small add. This is where min-maxing comes in and you could swap right after the timer hits 0 or even before because we have 3 seconds before we have to apply soul swap. Next up is that we need to swap to all the reflection as fast as possible. In this case having a good keybind and being fast with your mouse movement is key. If you notice he ends up putting dots on the initial add he dotted. So now we are already losing DPS. Having your camera angle like this is super good because it allows us to click around the targets fast while we spam our soul swap button. If you notice his mouse movement it's a bit weird. You should already be ready to target the new ad while you're exhaling your dots so you can instantly click the new target as soon as you inhale them off again. If you look you can see how he messes it up. He loses focus once the target moves and he doesn't get dots rolling on the last reflection. Instead he targets the boss for a second, targets the reflection that isn't dotted. He could have easily just put them from the boss to the last ad instead. That way he would have recovered. Instead he has to go back to his initial target, loses a lot of timer on the dots while he isn't inhaling or exhaling because they keep ticking while he messed it up. He dots the corrupted prison person up but decides to renew unstable affliction. It's always risky to renew your dots on low health and fast dying targets. He should have swapped to the boss before thinking about using Dark Soul and renewing unstable affliction. He still has 5 seconds left before Wrath is at max stack and Gem has a 9 second timer left as well. He ends up losing the remaining corruption and agony, and ideally he would have liked to have and renew unstable affliction and corruption with the Gem proc Dark Soul and the Black Blood he had. Instead he ends up using one shard with an 8 stack Black Blood, Gem and Dark Soul to renew on the boss and he uses another shard to renew them at 10 stacks. Now I want to note this is normally not a good idea to use two shards for something that could have manually been handled on the first line of dots. It's important to remember every soul burn you do is one horn you take away which is 35% damage for 8 seconds. You need to sometimes watch out just using shots because you're losing horn up time if you're fumbling around with them. But because this fight has small adds that gain shots, if you're sure there's still an add up, which there luckily is in this case, he can easily just swap the dots and drain soul the add to get back the 4 shards. So overall it didn't end up hurting him as much as it could have. He would have been in more trouble had the reflection died earlier. But after this he gains another black blood proc. With the Dark Souls still remaining he decides to renew the dots again without the meta gem so we lose 13% haste on those dots. From one point of view you can say that he won't have any more procs for a long time because of the several procs we had. So he wants to roll the dots for as long as possible but on the other side Agony still has nearly half a minute left on it. UA is our shortest dot and sometimes it can be worth it to renew it in this situation because we know we have a very slim chance to get another proc lining up with other things like this. In this situation he shouldn't have overridden everything. Sometimes you have to do a job on a boss and soaking rifts on Sha is something you do but the key is to always DPS while you do your job. You can't always neglect everything to do your job. That's not a viable option. Always fill flame if you play without Kaldiadin's cunning while running and at least make sure you keep up haunt with those powerful procs we just had. He still has 2 shards left to use and his powerful trinket proc and cooldown dots are ticking without 35% damage increase. If there's a time we do wish to have horned up it's now. So always remember to keep horned up when the powerful procs are up. If you can delay your job or do it previous to these moments it would obviously be better. Now the time has come that the last renewed dots with 10 stack black blood and dark soul is coming to an end on unstable affliction. 
Unless you get any sort of proc, you do not wish to renew it before the last moment. In this case he renews UA at 4 seconds, which is too early. I know it's minimal, but there's no reason to renew it when the cast is so fast. Losing a tick or two without procs is everything for Affliction. He does it better with Corruption, renewing it with the Meta Gem at the last second and casting another Unstable Affliction to get it up with it as well. We have a very slim chance to get any major procs anytime soon and our cooldowns are still nearly 30 seconds away, so we take what we can get. He misses the timer of the next spawning ads and he's in the situation where your UA and Corruption is about to run out before we want to soul swap it around. Generally it can be worth it to swap around even with low timers left, because the ads can die rather fast and depending if they are powerful or not, but th in this case it's just meta gem, so he decides to renew them and start swapping around. He does another little trick you can do which is to cast Seed of Corruption before you soul swap, and it will take the Seed of Corruption around as well. It's close to impossible to do if you have procs on your dots because they take so fast and hard, but in this case they don't. Seed of Corruption doesn't do that much damage, so you will need the adds to be gathered up and not die super fast before it's better to just swap around instantly. He ends up getting teleported in which breaks the damage pattern, but he could have tried to be a bit faster when the adds spawn. In most skills the adds die fast, so you don't have time to think or react slow, but he is lucky they killed him at a rather grandmother speed. Because of the disturbance going downstairs and coming back up, he lost the track of where his dots are and how long left. It's not the world's end because we didn't actually have something super good running on them, but I'd like to see him at least try to renew the dots without using a shot on the ads that are still alive and getting swaps around. Instead he ignores his dots and goes to soak, comes back and uses a soul shot that again could have been 35% damage from haunt. Doing your job and soaking is good, but you need to try to fit it into your rotation and play. If you just soak when you need to, you don't do damage, and if you just do damage you don't soak. Key is to try to optimize both to maximize the two. Since Dark Soul is off cooldown by now, we know Expanded Mind will proc, which is even a bigger issue using soul shards on necessary. He would need to get shards from the small ads because we always want to start Expanded Mind and Dark Soul phase with some shards for soul burns and haunts. What ideally would have been a full line of cooldown dots with 4 shards in the bank ends up being no shards. Affliction is all about preparing for what is coming, it's not a hard playstyle, it's actually one of the easiest once you get comfortable with dots. Because now he ends up in a situation with Expanded Mine and Dark Soul about to fade, Tricks of the Trade active and zero shards. He didn't drain soul the small ad, he didn't dot the big ad before it was dead, and he didn't manage to renew the dots at this precious time with 4 stacks Black Blood, Expanded Mine, Dark Soul and Tricks of the Trade. Moments like these are everything for Affliction. You just need as many procs to stack up as possible to do insane damage. Potion could maybe even have been in place here since we are going to swap around dots to small ads in 18 seconds. Damage control would have been to manually read dot before tricks, expanded mine and dark soul faded, but instead he ends up renewing dots with just wrath stacking up and a tiny agony left with no duration. He even renews corruption after the 10 stack fades sadly because of a very tiny timing window. Always remember though that agony and unstable affliction always have higher priority to get renewed with higher stacks of black blood. Corruption does very little damage and is more based around haste procs, as we wanted to tick fast for more nightfall procs and soul shots. The damage of Corruption isn't much, so always renew Unstable Affliction and Agony latest and Corruption first if you manually redot in such scenario. Next up we're about to have adds again, and now the crucial part is not to lose focus of swapping around your dots. A key here is having the easy access to soul swap. I personally use F and then always think ahead of what you're swapping to. Be aware of your next target so you don't lose track of where your dots went or what target you're about to dot. You need to be super fast in case your nameplate gets messed up. It's always better to redot an old target with dots instead of losing track and duration on them. In this scenario he does the start fine but ends up losing track of the dots as soon as the mobs move towards the middle. He targets around different targets to find his dots and ends up just putting one dot line with a soul burn soul swap into the boss with 10 stack black blood. In this scenario not only didn't he manage to dot every single ad, he also ended up renewing a dot line on a target with no dots because they had completely faded, meaning his agony is stacking up from one again. And because there's no dots, he doesn't gain the pandemic effect and extra 50% duration on them. If he had just redotted one of the ads with his dots, he would have gained more time on the dots with 10 stack black blood. Always make sure you redot on a target that already has lasting dots so you get the full dot duration plus the extra time from pandemic effect. He gets imprisoned with them being slow at getting him out, but he should have had dots running on all the ads because they die so slow here. And make sure you get rid of most of your shards before you can drain soul 4 shards back when they die off. 
The big manifestation ad is never really getting dotted, most likely this time because of imprisonment. But this is another ad we can use to extend our dot duration further and get another 4 shot from. Gaining these shots from ads is a huge profit. As mentioned, it's 35% damage for 8 seconds per shot, so it's not something minor at all. He ends up swapping around dodge which wasn't really worth it because the ads were so low and ready to get drain sold. He's running around with 4 shots because he hasn't used any to cast haunt and he focuses too much on going back fast from being imprisoned. There's no reason to instantly run back instead of casting horn and then moving. On a fight like this it's not bad to keep your shard count low as long as you have adds available to drain soul, which we do in this case. While lagging to keep horned up and use soul shots, he soul swaps around to the small adds, which isn't worth it when they are on sub 10% and dying. He should have just used shards on the boss and used them for drain soul, or even dotted them while he was running back from being imprisoned. Remember when you run back from a task like soaking or such, using soul swap is always a good thing if you have targets, because it allows us to move around without cancelling casts. So moving while you soul swap is perfect when running back instead of wasting time when he is already back and the mobs are about to die. Another example of neglecting what you are supposed to do is when his dots is about to fade and he goes to soak. At least he fell flames which is good, but he lets UA and corruption drop, which is not good. He should obviously just stop for one second to cast UA and run while renewing corruption. Add spawn again and if we notice his expanded mind procs doing it. Make sure you use the potion and use dark soul in such an area where you know you won't have another 2 minute procs before the fight ends. There's no point to swap around unbuffed dots when expanded mind just procs and, and dark soul is ready to be used. He should have instantly used dark soul and started to spam those powerful dots around instead of focusing on swapping around a weak seed of corruption that get lost during the swap anyhow. At this moment he actually has 2 seconds left of expanded mind and messagem jade spirit black blood has proc and tricks of the trade is up and he hasn't used dark soul yet. This is the perfect moment to use your potion and get a huge dot line off with as many rat stacks you can while you still keep the expanded mind proc. He barely makes it with 0.1 second left of expanded mind when he renews the dot line but he does that huge mistake of putting it on the boss which had no dots at all. This means our agony is at 0 stacks and our dots only last 24, 18 and 14 seconds instead of those durations plus 50% from pandemic. We lost 50% duration on the dots with close to the best luck you can have in the game with everything lining up like that. Obviously Wrath a bit earlier would be better but this scenario happens 1 in a million so you need to make the best of it when it happens. This is what affliction is all about, getting RNG luck and taking advantage of it. So sadly he's going to lose 50% duration, 10 seconds of agony stacking up and with the ad spawning now he has the chance to extend the dots duration even further by swapping around these beastie dots. So had he done the optimal duration we could have made them last quite a while with the chance of keeping 100% uptime on Haunt throughout it too because of the drain soling. He doesn't really have the best of luck getting teleported and imprisoned so he goes down but gets out really fast. Since the ads are dead with his dots and he didn't re dot the boss he lost everything. What you can do as a safety net is to try to always keep the dots on the boss before the timer when you go down, so you at least have them when you get back out. Now he has to start stacking up agony from one again and a fresh dot line with soul burn soul swap while he rugged boots back he decides to use a shot on renewing dots again on 8 stacks instead of focusing on haunt or fell flaming. He uses the last one with 10 stacks and tricks. That's a shot too many in a normal scenario but because we are at execute range it doesn't hurt us that bad. He still had one shot left over and with Drain Soul we just need to do 2 ticks for it before we get another shot back. But here's the next issue, he uses Malefic Grasp as a muscle memory reflex and ends up running around cancelling the Drain Souls all the time. I personally started using a Drain Soul timer that makes a sound every tick it does. It's really helpful to guide you through cancelling after one tick. Here you might end up never getting the tick off because they aren't always accurate on the cast bar and he just cancels them all the time to move. Place yourself a bit out of the group so you can stand still and soak the balls, they won't kill you. Or even use Cult Jaden's Cunning if you have to run around a lot. And just Malefic Grasp if you don't dare to risk it. Before the boss dies he loses tracks of the dots again and has to soul burn soul swap which seems to be his biggest issue. The boss was so low he wouldn't really get anything out of it instead of just haunting the boss. Overall a lot of small and some major things that can improve basely to help him reach even higher numbers. Affliction is always about predicting the fight and keeping track of your dots. It's not a hard spec because you have so much reaction time to snapshotting your dots. You have one button you need to press when you renew the big dots and soul swapping around is just one key we need to spam. What I think hurt the most players is they might lose track of the dots and not be fast enough on the target switches. Practice your mouse movement more and always be one step ahead of what you want to do. Rest of the fight you have a big countdown on when to renew your dots and afdot helps you with all the decision making most of the time. 
One big strength of Affliction is the fact that on farm we know the fights, we know the timers and we know every bit of knowledge about when and what happens. That makes it even easier to play Affliction on farm, because we can always think ahead, which is a huge bonus. Thanks for watching another episode of my workshops. Make sure to comment what you think and if you'd like to see more. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with what I'm doing, and visit my website for some more written content.